What's going on y'all? Today we'll be making a cowrie shell anklet. This will be a detailed tutorial so once you're done with this you will be essentially a pro at making cowrie shell anklets and if you like the way this one looks then stay tuned because we're about to get right into it. For the materials you'll need cowrie shells, a lighter, scissors, some type of cord. I personally used a nylon cord but you can also use cotton or you can use any type of cord that is flexible but still durable enough to where it won't break under tension. And then lastly, you will also need a measuring tape or a ruler. Okay, so let's get started. As you see here, I am measuring the first piece of string. Now, you wanna cut two pieces of string at 24 inches each. Now, this is specifically for an anklet. If you're making a necklace or if you're making a bracelet, it might be a different length. But for an anklet, we're gonna go ahead and cut it at 24 inches each. As you see here, I am cutting the second piece of string. So we're gonna cut right there again at the 24 inch mark. I'm going to go ahead and set that to the side. Now we're going to cut a third piece of string at 12 inches and this string will be used to make the anklet adjustable towards the end. So for now we're just going to cut that at 12 inches and set it to the side. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my Kyrie shell since we have the cords completely cut and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on the table and I'm going to grab the cord. So now that you have the cord in hand, you wanna just make sure that the ends are even because if the ends are uneven, then that will lead to an unbalanced looking anklet and you definitely do not want that. So now we're gonna go ahead and grab the cord and make a knot at the six inch mark. Now you might have to measure, I kind of just eyeballed it because I'm used to making these. But for you, I would suggest just grabbing a ruler or a measuring tape just to make sure that you get it right. So now we're going to go ahead and make that knot and pull it tautly to make sure that it does not come undone. And then the purpose of this knot is of course just to make sure that the cowrie shells do not fall off of the cord once threaded through it. So as you see here there was a bit of excess cord so I just went ahead and cut that off because again we want to make sure that everything is balanced. So now we're going to lay out the cord to prepare it for threading. And to thread, you're going to go ahead and put one end of the cord through the top of the cowrie shell and just pull it through. And then you're going to turn the cowrie shell over and put the other end of the cord through the back of the cowrie shell. And then you just let the shell slide down to the knot. So the cowrie shell is now where it should be and now we're going to go ahead and make another knot to make sure that we're able to keep the cowrie shell in place. Now the thing with doing these knots is that you have to make sure that you're pushing the knot down towards the shell. When I first began making these I was having issues with having too much space between the knots and I learned that in order to keep that from happening you do this as I'm doing right here. So you hold the shell and you also push the knot down towards the shell. So don't just make the knot and then just pull the knot right where it is. You want to make sure that you're pulling the knot downward. So we're going to go ahead and repeat that process of putting one of the cords in the front of the cowrie shell and the other through the back. And then we're just going to let the cowrie shell slide down to the knot and we're going to make another knot. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this for you one more time and then we're going to speed it up. Again, you don't want to leave too much space between the knot and the cowrie shell because that will make the shells move around too much and you don't really want that. So we're going to go ahead and push the knot down towards the shell, pull it nice and tight, and there you go. So the average woman's anklet is anywhere from 9 to 12 inches. The great thing about this anklet is that it is adjustable so it will fit most ankles. The average man's anklet is usually about 11 to 14 inches, so if you're making this for a man, I would suggest maybe doing about 10 to 11 inches worth of cowrie shells, but as far as for the average woman's anklet, I typically measure this to about a 9.5 to 10 inches worth of cowrie shells. So 
So now that you've finished threading the anklet, we're going to go ahead and grab that 12 inch cord that you cut previously and you're going to set the anklet down and then put the cord underneath the string that is on the anklet. And then you just want to make sure that the strings are even. As you see I'm doing here, I'm just lining them up, making sure that the ends match one another. Now we're going to proceed with making what's called a square knot. So you want to put one of the cord atop of the anklet cord. And then you're going to take the other end and you're going to put it on top of the cord that you just laid down. And you're going to bring that one underneath the anklet cord and then through that loop right there so it's kind of hard to explain i feel like it's way easier to just look at rather than to hear verbally explain so i'm just going to let y'all watch this here and i'm going to slow it down for the next round that you do about 12 to 15 square knots i do enough just so that i can feel comfortable with the fact that it is enough material for it to easily adjust sometimes when it's not enough knots it'll kind of be harder for it to move up and down so i found that 12 to 15 square knots is like a sweet spot Okay y'all, so I hope that makes sense after watching it a few times. I know for me personally, it took several times for me to really understand how to make the square knot because it can be a little more difficult than it looks just as far as remembering how to make it. But now that you've completed that step and you have a beautiful square knot, we're going to cut off the excess that you see here because we can't have all of that. That doesn't look good. So now you want to grab your scissors and just cut off the excess string until there's about an inch to a half an inch left. And once you do that, you want to go ahead and grab the lighter because we are going to burn these ends. So now to make sure that this square knot does not unravel, we're going to burn the ends that keeps it in place and again, it makes sure that it will not unravel. So once your cord comes into contact with the fire, it will melt fairly quickly. So there's no need to hold the lighter there too long. Once it is melted, you just want to make sure that you tap the excess cord down so that there is no extra material sticking up. Now we're going to go ahead and grab the ends of the cords and we're going to make a knot on either end. Now the knot is just to ensure that the square knot stays in place because without the knots it is likely or it is possible at least that the square knot could fall off especially if somebody accidentally just adjusts it too much. So now we're going to burn the excess cord once more. Again this is just to make sure that there is no extra material sticking up just to make it look more cohesive. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. You made your first Carrie Show anklet. Give yourself a round of applause. Give yourself a pat on the back because you did it just like that. You sat here, you learned how to do it, and I'm proud of you. So congratulations. <laughs> Hopefully y'all enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in my next one. Peace. Is it? 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 Is it?